Suppose there is a test or examination of the subject in which you are strong, you would be successful and uh, very often one is not aware of its weak points and the main trouble lies here. It is impossible to overcome your weakness if you don't know what are the weakness. You will repeat these mistakes in the exam again and again. Weak points are the areas in a subject or subject itself. For example, it may be mathematics or maybe English or a particular topic in these subjects. Another way to find out your weak points is to go through the last 10 year question papers. If you feel difficulty in answering a few questions, then mark them as your weak points. You can put these answers in different categories. Another way to find out the weak point is to go through your textbooks. You need not read the complete book rather than go on turning the pages while reading only few lines of the page. After reading a complete chapter, you have to recall the material in it. This will help you to find a weak point as well as strong points. You can find out your weak points from your last scores also. The whole of the exercise can be completed in one or two days. Now you have to complete the list of your weak points and then work on it. This is the syllabus of your weak points. Keep reading the syllabus at frequent intervals. This will always remind you to work on these points besides your strong points. If at any time you come to know that new topic is added to your weak point, then add it to the list and work on it. On the other hand, you can also delete the weak points from your list if you feel comfortable with it after working on it. Moral of the story is that you should know your weak points and put extra efforts to improve them. Psychologists contend that group mind is more powerful than the individual mind. Each individual is unique in itself. Everyone has a unique style to deal with the problem. In course of time, everyone develops his own techniques to improve efficiency in studies. I would never advise to leave your present system of studies. If you are comfortable with it, you can continue. You should adopt a combined approach in the studies pattern so that you can take benefit of both that is the individual pattern of study and the group pattern. Group study can be helpful if you are preparing for interview or other some psychological test. In group study there is a lot of brainstorming so you get variety of ideas. There is a two way communication in the group study as it is a discussion based. You can get feedback about your performance immediately from your friends. You get a chance to improve your weak points. It helps you to know where you stand in the group. Competitors may motivate you study more. You can clarify many of your confusions in studies as well as can help others. You will be well informed by others about various important details. However, beyond a certain limit, group study may not be helpful. As I have already said, you should adopt a combined approach in your studies. Both the style of studies have their merits as well as demerits. For example, if you have to memorize the articles of the constitution and you have four friends, you can divide all the articles equally and one friend will prepare 1 to 25, other from 26 to 50 and so on. So that while you sit in the group, you can contribute to each other. Coaching is necessary if you are preparing for a competitive examination. You may take coaching for your normal classes also if you think so. Before joining a coaching institute, you should keep at least the following points in your mind. Coaching institute may claim their coaching is the best available in the market, but the students who have attended this institute are the best judges of their claims. You should consult those students before joining a particular institute. Never go for big names. The size of the advertisement should not be the criteria for selecting a coaching institute.